We're going to take a look at uh, control self-assessment in this lesson. And uh, the definition is really kind of a management technique to be able to assure the stakeholders that the internal control systems of an organization are reliable. Well, how do they do that? They do it by having a methodology that allows them to review the key business objectives, the risks involved with those objectives, and the internal controls that are used to manage those risks. And it's kind of an ongoing evaluation, as though uh, you could almost say that the internal employees were doing their own constant audit of the internal controls to make sure that they are safe, secure, and meeting the objectives. And because it's an ongoing type of monitoring or assessment, it, uh, that's what kind of brings the extra confidence to the uh, stakeholders that the organization is doing everything it can to be reliable. So the CSA, uh, what we call the Control Self-Assessment, and I did promise you all sorts of acronyms. So the CSA, it's um, kind of a collection of tools that are, like I said, to used to gather information. It could be something as simple as a questionnaire uh, up to a fully facilitated workshop where you know you are, are basically having this um, you know group discussion with the people involved in the day-to-day -day operations of these controls. It also is an ongoing interviews of uh, you know how it's working day to day, uh, based on uh, the you know people's knowledge of the area. The basic tools uh, for CSA are going to be the same uh, whether the project that you're look, working on is a technical one or a financial one or an operational one. Because again, we're having kind of that overview discussion of the term control. And, uh, and as we know, a control is not just a piece of hardware. It's not just a piece of software. It, you know, there's no you know, one thing a control is other than something we use uh, to mitigate the risk, protecting our assets from uh, any type of hazard that's out there. So uh, you can utilize this, um, I, I guess you could say you could utilize this type of uh, control self-assessment regardless of the type of project you're working on. Now, if you choose to use one of those um, facilitator workshops, you need to make sure that the people you have running those workshops have uh, good listening skills and the ability to ask questions. Because it's not designed necessarily to be a, uh, you know, a presentation where I'm telling you how it's going to be, but it's an interactive uh, workshop. Because, I mean, that's the term. It's not a classroom. It's a workshop where we're making discussions, where we're talking about the controls, we're talking about the issues, we're talking about the risks, we're listening, uh, we're asking questions because we're trying to come up with a good consensus and a good way of improving um, you know, the, the aspects of how the control works. The facilitator should have good verbal communication skills. They should be able to work with group dynamics because you know, sometimes in workshops, um, you know, some stronger opinions can lead to stronger opinions and, you know, so you got to work with the dynamics. Um, you should be able to resolve, whoever the facilitator is, be able to resolve complex situations. And uh, the facilitator should be also good at time management, staying on the schedule because, again, sometimes it's too easy to, to uh, take a, a little side street in these discussions and before you know it, you're lost. You, you didn't stay on the topic at hand, staying on the schedules. And so it's, those are our key points that you look for in having uh, whoever it is you pick to be the facilitator. Now notice this is not the auditor. Now a lot of what we're talking about though could be passed off as an audit because uh, a lot of these uh, control self-assessments we've talked about may very well mimic the types of uh, procedures that a person would go through in auditing that control. So the primary objective for the CSA is to leverage the internal audit function by shifting some of the monitoring responsibilities to the actual functional areas. Now, this is not to say we're replacing the auditor, but that we are doing something, as I said, can be very much uh, taken as an ongoing audit. Now, the goal of CSA should be to educate management about the control design and monitoring. Uh, and again, that's one of the objectives, is to be able to gather that information and to make those recommendations. The objectives should be, uh, or should outline the acceptable control environments. Through the use of workshops, you'll gain the empowerment of workers to assess or even design the control environment. In other words, giving them the feeling of ownership, if not the actual ownership, of, of making sure the process is working, that the control is, uh, is um, uh, working the way it's supposed to be, that they feel as though they have input to the actual design of the control environment. There should be at least a generic set of goals and metrics for each process that can be used in designing the CSA program. And again, if it's something you use as simple as a sheet, well, you know, I need to not just give you a blank sheet and say, tell me what you think, but I should have some goals, some metrics that uh, provide the ability for the assessment of the control.